Hey guys, I'm Eliza Wood. Welcome to my channel. Let's talk about Arwen's coat. So I know it's been forever since I last posted and I said that I was going to post like once a month and that totally did not happen. The reason for that is because it was decided that I was going to graduate over the summer. So I spent a lot of my summer writing a thesis. And I did not have time to work on things like sewing and cosplay and stuff like that. What little I did work on, I didn't do on camera because there was no way I was going to take the time to set up the lights and the cameras and all that thing when I only had like half an hour that I was willing to give myself for a break. And then immediately after graduating, I actually wound up moving back to live with my parents. So right now I only have two or three days that I'm willing to devote to recording. So it's still going to be pretty up in the air on when I can actually get things posted, which I'm going to apologize for that now. But I'll try to get some things posted. I at least have three videos planned, but again, I have no idea when any of those are going to be posted. Technically, I have eight, including this one, because I'm working on a series right now for Arwen's chase coat, which is exactly why you came to this video. You don't care about my life in the background. So I'm going to go ahead and move on to why you actually came here. I have decided to create Arwen's chase coat, which as you can see here is a blue coat, bluish greenish. It's kind of hard to tell. A lot of people think it's more green and um, some people in the behind the scenes think it's more blue. Um, she's got the blue coat and she's got a sleeve, um, a sleeve detail which would have probably been from an undershirt and she has purple pants. It is her most well-known outfit, as far as I can tell, the other one being her coronation dress. Arwen has always been one of my favorite characters. Of course, no one can be Aragorn, but Arwen has been up there. So much so that when I was younger, I had a Halloween costume in which I was wearing Arwen's chase coat made by my mother. And ever since then, I've wanted to remake it because I obviously don't fit into it anymore and I don't even think we have it anymore. I wish we did because I would like to show you, but I don't have any, um, I don't even think we had any pictures of me wearing the coat. So what better place to start on my crusade to make all of Arwen's outfits than her chase coat? But before we can get into the making of it, I actually have to do some research. So before I do that, I should actually explain what I'm going for. I want to make Arwen's coat, but I want to make it historically accurate to the movie. And by that I mean there, I know that Lord of the Rings is not based on a specific time period, but I want to make the coat, coat outfit thing, so that it would fit in, like it's not um, it's a full outfit that Arwen would have worn at the time. So I'm going to do it a little bit differently. I'm not, I want to try to stray from making a costume as much as I can. That being said, I do not have the money to make myself a true suede coat. And I certainly don't have the ability to make myself a sword or the belt buckle. So it is probably going to have a lot of costuming in it, and I'm sad about that, but eh, it is what it is. And of course, you're going to ask me, why bother doing historically accurate if you're just going to make a costume anyway? And I, to that I will say, let me live my lie. So in order to make a historically Historic. I'm, I'm putting quotes around it because it's not really historically accurate because I'm not using a historical time period, but I am trying to make it as though it would be historically accurate if we were living in Middle Earth. But in order to make a historically accurate um, 
um, Arwen's coat outfit thing, I have to do a lot of research. And I'm going to go ahead and include any links that I find to people's DIYs or tutorials or anything like that in the description. So if you don't want to go through the entire process that I'm going through, you can look up one of their um, one of their tutorials and hopefully that'll help you just as much as my YouTube videos will. So the first thing I wanted to do is I want to look up other people's making of's. And of course where I'm going to start is YouTube. On YouTube I was able to find one DIY for Arwen's coat and it's actually a no-sew DIY where you get a, um, a pre-made coat and you alter it to make Arwen's coat. So since YouTube wasn't very helpful in the sense that there wasn't a big selection of tutorials, I actually wound up going to Google and while I was looking up pictures of Arwen's um, coat, I found two other blogs in which they go through the process of explaining how they make their coats based on pre-made patterns, whether they be Simplicity patterns, McCall's patterns, I don't actually remember which ones specifically they use, but if you're curious, you can go ahead and check them out. And one of those blogs led me to my favorite costuming website for Arwen's outfits, and that's the Costumer's Guide. This is where I found all of my best pictures and behind the scenes and all that, all that stuff. And pretty much all of the pictures that I am showing to you right now is actually from the Costumer's Guide. So okay, we've found some tutorials and I've looked at uh, all of the tutorials on how to make Arwen's coat. And they aren't quite what I'm looking for, but they're definitely helpful. I've gotten some good suggestions from each of them. So now what I want to check out is what actually I need to make. I want to make the entire costume from ha by hand. That's including the coat all the way down to the pants and the gloves and the shoes. So I need to figure out what all I need to make. So let's start with the coat, which is what we all came here for. So, so the coat is, pro is a bluish greenish probably suede material with an embossed pattern on her shoulder, some ribbon in the front, and it's all tied together in a belt buckle at the front. It also includes a bluish, purplish, greenish underskirt that is connected at the waistline and a um, sleeve portion, which would have been for an undershirt. Now on Arwen's costume, as you can see here, the sleeve is actually just a sleeve. They attach it at the elbow right underneath the seam line. Now that would not be historically accurate. So that's one of the main things that's going to change because of um, me trying to make it historically accurate. I'm going to add in an undershirt. I also briefly considered making the underskirt a separate piece, but I couldn't think of how to do that and have it sit correctly and make make it so it actually looked like it was supposed to. So I think the only possible way of doing the underskirt is to simply attach it at the waistline. Now you probably noticed that I didn't say anything about the back of her coat. I only mentioned the front details, and that would be because there are no pictures of the back of Arwen's coat. Any pictures of her back when she is wearing the coat is covered by her hair. And looking at other people's cosplays of the back of Arwen's coat, there are several different variations that people have used. But I wanted to be as movie accurate as I could be. Which means I had to find something that would be more movie accurate than what people think the back of the coat would have looked like. And to do that, I decided to look up figurines of Arwen made by Weta. I don't actually know if they are his, uh, movie accurate, but I think they're about as close as you're gonna get to movie accuracy, except by looking at the pictures. 
So there are two figurines that Weta has made of Arwen's chase coat. There is one where she's just standing there, I think she's holding her sword, and then there is another one where she is on her horse with Frodo running away from the Nazgul. That is going to be the one that is going to be the most helpful for us because her hair is flying back, the back of the coat is flying back, you can just see the back of everything. And in so doing, I noticed that there is also a ribbon in the back of the coat, probably tied in a knot and not a bow, because a bow would be way too visible, and also would come undone really easily. I don't understand why there's a ribbon in the front and the back, but hey, Arwen can do whatever the heck she wants, and I'm gonna follow it. Other than that, the back of the coat isn't very surprising. It's uh, what you would expect from the back of a coat. Relatively easy. So now that I've got the easy part with all the pictures out of the way, I have to look into the underclothing. And I know it's kind of backwards to start at the outside and then work your way in, and I'm going to regret starting on the coat and then finishing with the underclothings later on probably, but I will deal with that as I come to it. So, for the undershirt, this is going to be a lot of guesswork. i got to figure out what her undershirt might look like. For this, I actually am going to look at historical undergarments, just so I can get some ideas that, some ideas, since I'm certainly not going to get them from pictures from the movie because they aren't going to show random people in their underclothing in the movies. So there's two different types of underclothing that I found while watching historical sewers. There is the shift, which um, is an underdress. It's made out of a lighter material and generally goes pretty much down to your ankles. Probably Arwen would have been wearing a shift under her dresses if she was wearing anything at all. But you can't tuck a shift into pants and there is certainly not something like that visible underneath her coat. So the other choice that I have is a pair of combinations, which is a shirt and um, kind of bloomers that they wore, they started wearing a little later on. And while at first glance that seems like it'll probably work, the bloomers have some fabric to them. They aren't meant to be tight against the legs, and Arwen's riding pants are tied against the legs. You cannot wear anything that is going to give you bulk around your legs if you're going to wear Arwen's pants. So for that reason, I think that what I'm going to do is I'm going to do a shift-like shirt. So I'm going to make pretty much a shift and make it go down to probably about the hips. Um, and then it's going to be tucked into the pants underneath it. So you can't see it through the coat because the coat does not go down that far. Now, since I don't know what the shifts would have looked like in that time period, I think what I'm going to do is I'm going to use some of Arwen's dresses to give me some inspiration, just the collar of her dresses so I can get some good idea of a good inspiration of what she would like to wear underneath her um, dresses. And the one thing I have to remember is that Arwen's coat comes down to probably about this button. And so the shirt cannot go any higher than that button because the shirt can't be visible anywhere except for the sleeve where it is visible in the movies. Which then takes me to the pants. So the I'm doing a chicken thing. <laughs> Based on the pictures from Costumer's Guide, 
her pants look like they're probably just a pair of purple leggings that they chose solely so that she could easily ride her horse. And while I'm totally fine with making skin tight pants to make it movie accurate, I don't want leggings. They wouldn't be historically accurate. So what I need to do is I need to figure out what the torso portion of the pants would look like in Middle Earth. There's two different choices that I was kind of mulling in my head. There is the tied pants where you just get a tie and tie it at the torso and they stay on because you've tied it wherever it was. Which would be in my, I, I think would be more historically accurate. Or there is the button approach. I'm not going to use zippers because there would not be zippers in Middle Earth at that time. So I've either got, and also Velcro, Velcro would not have existed in that time period. So we've got ties or we've got buttons. Well, ties would be more historically accurate. It's probably not going to work since I'm going to be using a stretchy material for the skin tight pants. If the way that ties work is you have a loose amount of fabric that you pull up and then you tie it, you tie it tighter around the waist. So I'm leaning towards buttons, but I gotta make sure that buttons actually exist in Middle Earth at that time period. Which, funny story about that. So I was trying to find out if buttons existed in Middle Earth, and I looked at all of the characters that I could think of. Of course, I started with Aragorn, and I couldn't really find any buttons on him. And then I looked at Legolas, and I couldn't find any buttons on him. I looked at Gimli, but his beard's too long, you can't see his clothes anyway. And then I looked at Boromir, and there was, there was a closure that was probably buttons, but it was not the type of buttons you would use on pants. So I was like, oh no, they don't use buttons. What am I gonna do? And then I remembered the hobbits. You know, where there's a whole scene specifically about Bilbo getting stuck by his buttons and then them flying off. Yeah, that's the kind of buttons I'm looking for. So I felt a little, a little dumb at that point, but hey, I got buttons. So now I gotta figure out what the torso portion would look like with buttons. So I'm gonna continue looking at Bilbo and we're gonna go to that scene where the dwarves surprise Bilbo at his house and he winds up just putting on a shirt and a pair of trousers. Oh, it's morning now. And that's the best visual I can find of a pair of pants in Middle Earth. Unfortunately, the way it looks that those pants are made is that there is one button and then some amount of space that is um, probably a zipper. I don't know that for sure, but I just said I didn't want to use zippers and I can't just leave that space undone because, um, because the fabric is going to be stretchy so in order for it to fit it's going to be pulled tight and if I leave that space undone it's going to pull that spot open and there's just going to be this massive it's going to look like my zipper's undone and I don't want that not that anybody's really going to see it because the coat's going to be hiding it but still that's not okay so I think what I'm going to do is I'm going to do a row of buttons all the way down so that we have a good closure and if you ask me if that's historically accurate I, I'm gonna say it's probably not but I did find a costume for a his for a, um, I did find a costume for a cowboy or something or other that had the buttons going all the way down so I'm just gonna pretend like it's historically accurate and move on See, this is why I was saying just let me live my lie and pretend that 
Let's all pretend that I'm actually doing historical accuracy when I'm, I know I'm clearly not. Okay, so that's her main outfit. You've got this, the jacket with the sleeves and the pants. However, I refuse to believe that Arwen went out into a dangerous situation to find Aragorn without some form of armor. Now, I don't know if the suede would be considered armor. I doubt it. I don't think it's very strong. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna add a piece of armor underneath her coat. Just a normal leather um, piece of armor that protects her torso. Since there is not clearly any armor anywhere else on her body, that's really the only place I can put something that would protect her and not be visible. So now I gotta figure out what a piece of armor would look like that a female elf would wear. And there is only one female elf for the job, and that would be Tariel. Tariel wears her ranger outfit pretty much the entirety of The Hobbit, and in that outfit she includes a leather breastplate thing. I don't actually know what that's called. I think I'm gonna look it up and put it somewhere around here so you can know what it is. Tariel's breastplate is made to be light and it's made to be mobile because she is a ranger. She will be moving around and jumping around in trees and things like that. So she needs to be lightweight, which I think would be the same for Arwen, who needs to be lightweight on top of her horse so that she can be as quick as possible, not weighing down her horse. And she has no need to doing metal armor because she's not planning on going to battle. I of course don't want to remake Tariel's breastplate because that's Tariel's. It doesn't belong to Arwen. But I will def but I'm thinking I'm probably going to use her breastplate and then alter it slightly to make it look more like Arwen would have worn it. Maybe put some butterflies in, because apparently Arwen loves butterflies. Okay, so we have a coat, a shirt, a pair of pants, trousers, whatever you want to call them, and leather armor. So the next step, the thing that brings the whole outfit together is of course the accessories. Now this section is probably going to be where I do the most costuming things because at this point it's beyond my capabilities. I can't make myself shoes and I can't do leather, uh, and I can't do metal work, but I'm gonna do my best to make it look like it would be historically accurate. So I'm gonna have gloves, a pair of boots, and of course the butterfly belt buckle that Arwen wears. I'm really excited about that, but I'm kind of dreading it because that seems like it would be a really difficult thing to make. But again, I really want to to make her coat movie accurate. I could just probably order these things and it would be more accurate. I could probably get a metal worker or somebody to make them for me. But let's make my life difficult instead. I really do want to have everything like handmade that I can say I did this. It's it, it's a really good feeling to be able to say that I made this with my own hands from top to bottom. Which means I also have to make myself a sword. I do actually own a replica of Arwen's sword, but you know, you can't actually bring something like this to a convention. So I gotta make myself um, a replica of Arwen's sword out of probably foam or something like that. Again, it's more costumey, but what can you do? Rules are rules. But that does mean I don't have to do a lot of research on this um, sword because I can just use the one I already have. 
probably gonna knock something over. I can just use the one I already have as a guide and make a new one based on that. And there you have it, the research that I've done for Arwen's coat. Of course, this was all broad, more broad um, things. I didn't want to get into too much specifics because I'm going to go into detail when I actually get to the making of the coats. I do hope this was helpful to you. If you're looking to make your own coat, please continue to watch this series. My next video is actually going to be on the making of the actual coat, and the one following that will be on the making of the undershirt. Um, or if you don't want to do the whole drafting, please check out the links um, below to the blogs and or YouTube channels that previously made the coat. Well, there you have it, guys. If you like this video or are interested in any of my future planned videos, please like and subscribe, and I'll see you guys later. Bye!